In this video, we will try to solve a problem on finding the equilibrium price using Kremer's rule in three markets. The question is like this. Uh, for the following market conditions, find equilibrium price using Kremer's rule. We have uh, three markets and their quantity demanded and quantity supplied is being given to us. That means Q1 uh, D denotes the quantity demanded in first market is equal to 45 minus 2P1 plus uh, 3P2 minus 7P3. P1, P2 and P3 are the price of commodities in three markets respectively and quantity supplied in first market is equal to minus 5 plus 4 P1. Okay. Similarly, we have market second. Quantity demanded in market second is this very equation. Quantity supplied in second market is this very equation. Similarly, for third market, we have this equation and we this equation. So we need to find out the equilibrium price. Okay. Using Kramer's rule. How do we uh, find out the Kramer's rule? First, we need to find out the individual equilibrium in each of these markets. Okay, so quantity demanded, we know at equilibrium, quantity demanded in the first market should be equal to quantity supplied in the first market. Okay, so this is quantity demanded. I can write it like this 45 minus 2p1. Uh, plus 3p2 minus 7p3 is equal to minus 5 plus 4p1 okay now if i uh, rewrite this or solve it for p here so how can we uh, write this stuff here so let me uh, write it here so we have 45 Or let me write it as it is here minus we have minus 2p1 transposing this it will get uh, subtracted 4p1 plus 3p2 minus 7p3 is equal to we have minus 5 if I transpose this it will get subtracted here we have 45 and if we write it like this so uh, mm, minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6p minus 6 is p1 plus 3p2 minus 7p3 is equal to minus 50 okay if i multiply both sides by my uh, minus 1 so this will become 6 p1 minus 3p2 plus 7 p3 is equal to 50 okay this is the equation for first market okay similarly uh, equation for second market can be found uh, by simply we equate this uh, quantity demanded and quantity supplied that is we have 1 6 uh, plus 2 p1 minus p2 uh, plus uh, 3 p3 this is quantity demanded in second market and we equate it with quantity supplied in second market that is minus 19 plus 5 p2 okay if we rearrange this stuff here so what will we get um, we have 2 p1 if i transpose this minus 5 p2 here so we have minus p2 minus 5 p2 becomes minus 6 p2 plus 3 p3 is equal to minus 19 transposing this 16 it will become minus 16 here okay so we have so for second market okay for second market we have this very equation uh, okay so this is a 2 p1 minus 6 p2 plus 3 p3 is equal to minus 35 multiplying both sides by minus 1 so we have this will become minus 2 p1 plus 6 p2 minus 3 p3 is equal to minus minus is plus 35 okay this will be the equation for second market okay so i will write it here so uh, equation for second market will be equal to minus 2 p1 plus 6 p2 minus 3 p3 is equal to 35 okay so i have just equated quantity demanded in market second with quantity supplied 
in market second okay i got this very stuff here similarly uh, for third market we equate these two uh, quantity demanded and quantity supplied so we have 30 minus p1 plus 2 p2 minus 8 p3 is equal to minus 6 plus 2 p3 so this can be written like this minus p1 plus 2 p2 if i transpose this it will get subtracted so we have minus 8 minus 2 is minus 10 p3 is equal to minus 6 transposing this it will become minus 30 so we have minus p1 plus 2 p2 minus 10 p3 is equal to minus 36 multiplying both sides by minus 1 so this will become plus p1 minus 2 p2 uh, plus 10 uh, p3 is equal to 36 okay this is the equation for third market let me write it here so we have p1 minus 2 p2 then we have 10 p3 is equal to 36 okay after that so we got the three equations uh, in terms of p okay after that what we need to do we will use the Kramer's rule first of all this is the equation for a uh, market first okay this is equation for first market this is for second market this is for third market okay so we have three equations okay so we will uh, write them first in matrix form that is a x is equal to b in this form okay this a denotes our coefficient matrix that means the coefficients of p1 p2 and p3 the coefficient of p1 is here 6 so i can write here 6 then we have minus 2 then we have 1 the coefficient of uh, p2 is minus 3 then we have 6 then we have minus 2 the coefficient of p3 is 7 and we have minus 3 and 10 okay this is our uh, coefficient matrix x denotes our uh, solution vector that means p1 p2 and p3 okay that we need to find out and this b denotes our b is our vector of constant terms that is 50 35 and 36 okay now we will be able to use the Kramer's rule okay so how do we use the Kramer's rule First, we need to take the determinant here, okay? Determinant of the coefficient matrix. So, the determinant of this matrix means we have to take the determinant like this. First, we write 6, okay? And mentally delete this row and this column and take determinant of remaining elements. So, remaining elements is 60 and are 60. Then, uh, minus minus is plus and we have minus of the formula. So, this is minus 6 then we have minus from the formula and we write this minus 3 and this this we multiply such that we mentally delete this row and this column and take determinant of remaining elements that is minus 2 1 minus 3 10 okay so multiplying these two that is minus 10 to the 20 so we have minus 20 So we have minus 20 then we have uh, minus from the formula and we have another minus here minus minus is plus so this becomes plus 3 then we write this 7 okay let me write it here 7 and mentally delete this column and this row and take determinant of remaining elements that is 2 2s are 4 minus minus is plus so we write 4 then we have minus from the formula then we subtract the product of 6 and 1 that is 6 here okay when we solve this stuff it will come out to be 259 okay i don't have space uh, to show you here here okay we got determinant positive if it was zero then we could not be able to solve this system of equations okay so either we would have infinite many solutions or no solutions okay so since we got the determinant is 259 okay which is not equal to zero then we can find out uh, the value of p1 p2 and p3 okay how do we find, uh, find out the value of p1 okay equilibrium level of p1 simply to find p1 okay 
we form new matrix A, let us say A1, okay, which is formed by this A1, uh, I, I repeat here, uh, to get the value of P1, we form a new matrix such that we replace first column of this coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms okay so in place of 6 minus 2 1 i write uh, this very stuff okay so i will write 50 35 and 36 and i write uh, these uh, this stuff same as it is minus 3 6 minus 2 then we have 7 minus 3 and 10 okay so i repeat here to find the optimal value of p1 first we need to form a new matrix which is formed by replacing the first row sorry first column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms okay then we need to take the determinant of this a1 okay determinant as we know i have explained uh, this stuff uh, uh, many times how do we take the determinant first we write this 50 okay mentally delete this row this column take determinant of remaining elements we have 60 and are 60 here okay then minus 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 is plus but we have the minus of uh, from the formula so we will get here this minus 6 okay then we have minus from the formula and we have minus 3 again here to, uh, now we mentally delete this row and this column okay this row this column and this row take determinant of remaining elements 35 into 10 comes out to be 350 similarly we have minus minus is plus 36 into 3 comes out to be 36 into 3 so 3 6 is our 18 so I can write here 8, then 3, 3 are 9, 10, okay. Then we write this 7. When we write this 7, we mentally delete this row and this column and take determinant of remaining element. So we have 35 into minus 2 is uh, minus 70. Then we have 36 into 6 is, is 2, 1, 6, okay. When we solve this stuff, it comes out to be 2, no, this comes out to be 2074 okay this came out to be 2074 then what will be the value of p1 so equilibrium value of p1 will be equal to this new determinant that means a1 upon the determinant of the coefficient matrix okay that means a so a1 we got 2074 and a is 259 which gives us 8 is the value of p1 okay simple thing uh, to get first what we do we just equate demand and supply in each market form a set, a set of three linear equations here okay after that we form we write the, these equations in matrix form okay such that ax is equal to b a is the coefficient matrix the coefficients are p1 p2 p3 x is the solution vector and b is the vector of constant terms okay after that to get the value of p1 first we form another matrix new matrix you can say such that to get uh, actually to get this p1 okay we replace first column of this coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms okay after that uh, we got the determinant of new matrix here 2074 then the value of p1 will be equal to this the determinant of this new matrix upon the determinant of the coefficient matrix which we got here 8 okay similarly to get the value of should i rub this out it will get very lengthy but i don't have the stuff here to rub this out okay i got uh, the stuff here so what should i rub here so let us write it here now to get the value of p2 okay 
we form new matrix A2. Okay. We form new matrix A2 such that A2 is formed by to get the value of P2, we form new matrix such that we replace this second. This time we replace the second column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms and other elements will remain same. So we have 6 minus 2, 1, 6 minus 2, 1 in place of minus 3, 6, uh, 2, we write this 50, 35 and 36 and we have 7 minus 3 and 10 okay and after that we take the determinant of this a2 okay determinant as i have shown you first we write this uh, term and mentally delete this row and this column and take determinant of remaining elements then we write uh, this second term uh, but we use minus here okay so then mentally delete this row and this column and take determinant of remaining elements as i have shown you here so a2 will come out to be uh, i have uh, calculated this 2849 okay i don't have space uh, to do the stuff here then the value of p2 will be equal to value of p2 will be equal to a2 the determinant of a2 upon a that means this 2849 divided by the value of a is 259 259 when we divide these two stuff we get answer is 11 okay so the the value of p2 will be 11 Sim similarly to get the value of what should i rub now mm -hmm. so let me rub this out here okay to show the how do we calculate a3 okay sorry p3 to get the value of uh, p3 uh, p3 we form new matrix let us say a3 which is formed by replacing this third column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms okay so new matrix will be like this 6 minus 2 1 as it is 6 minus 2 1 then we have minus 3 6 minus 2 in place of 7 minus 3 10 we write 50 35 36 50 35 36 then we take the determinant of this a3 okay when we solve this will come out to be one five zero one okay then the value of p3 will be equal to the determinant of this a3 matrix upon the determinant of coefficient matrix so we have one five zero one okay i don't have space and it would have got very lengthy so i'm just skip, uh, skipping on uh, this determinant side so we have two five nine here two five nine which comes out to be 5.8 okay so we got the value of p1 is 8 p2 is 11 and p3 is 5.8 okay uh, the point i want to make here is that if you want to get the value of first element here replace first column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms if you want to get the value of second element here replace second column of the coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms and if you want to get and the value of p3 replace third column of this coefficient matrix with the vector of constant terms okay then you will form a1 a1 is matrix then a2 and a3 okay after that you use the Kramer's rule so p1 is equal to this new special matrix upon the coefficient determinant of the coefficient matrix similarly the value of p2 will be uh, this new special matrix a2 upon the determinant of coefficient matrix and similarly p3 will be the new determinant upon the value determinant of the coefficient matrix okay so i hope i make myself clear but uh, actually i have explained this whole stuff in simple words in another video you can find that very video also uh, in the playlist of this channel and uh, 
in the playlist, I guess, in uh, matrix algebra in economics. Okay, I hope I make myself clear in this video. Thank you.